voters said there's still some 370,000 votes to count. So she is not giving in just yet. And now to another tight rate, the 50th congressional district. This one is to fill that seat left vacant by Duncan Hunter. And you can see Daryl Issa with 52% of the vote. Amar Kampanajar with 48%. That represents about 13,000 votes. Board of Supervisors race, District 2. And look at this, 50% to 50%. Steve Voss and Joel Anderson still neck and neck and still to be decided. And in a rare situation, the 53rd Congressional District, this one has been decided. Sarah Jacobs, 59% of the vote. Georgette Gomez with 41%. She has conceded. And we'll be talking to Sarah Jacobs live here coming up at the bottom of the hour at 1130. Also, remember the results. They're scrolling at the bottom of your screen through the newscast so you can stay on top of what's happening. Well, we are keeping an eye on the San Diego mayor's race, and right now, Todd Gloria leading Barbara Bree, as we saw. ABC 10 News reporter Marie Cornell joining us live at the Registrar of Voters. And Marie, what are the candidates saying this morning? So, Jim, we reached out to both candidates, uh, Barbara Bree. She sent over a statement, which you will see in a second. And we have learned that Todd Gloria will be holding a news conference later this afternoon. At this point, neither candidate, Todd Gloria or Barbara Bree, are officially accepting victory or defeat as they wait for the rest of the ballots to be counted to find out who voters chose to be the next mayor of San Diego. This is where we stand right now. Gloria is leading Bree 56 to 44 percent. This morning, Bree sent this statement saying in part, we know from our experience in the primary when we were way behind on election night that it's not over until it's over and there are still a lot of ballots to count, so I will reserve judgment while the remaining ballots are counted. Meanwhile, late last night, Gloria told supporters he was confident in the race, but adds he's not taking his eye off the finish line just yet. Tonight serves as a commitment, a commitment that we will do the work that we must do to have a brighter future for ourselves, for our children, and for our grandchildren. Though ballots are still being counted, some of Gloria's supporters are ready to call him mayor, and they say they're looking forward to seeing him get down to business. I'd like to see diversity. I'd like to see her, and I'm not saying diversity like what we typically hear or see. We see the African-American and Latino community um, represented well. Um, and I, I still think we should have more representation from all communities. Um, of color, but with most offices, you do not see um, a Filipino, a Vietnamese representative, a Chinese representative. But when Todd comes into the community, we know Todd. We see him there. He works with us. He's um, participated with us. And what I really like is that he interacts with everyone. Now, both Bree and Gloria are Democrats, so this will be the first time since 2014 when San Diego will have a Democratic mayor. Live from Kearney Mesa, Marie Cornell, ABC 10 News. We have some breaking election news here in the 10 News Live Center. Just in the last few minutes, the uh, Donald Trump campaign has filed a lawsuit in Michigan asking a judge to tell them to stop counting votes. The Trump team says the lawsuit is on the grounds that they were not allowed to observe the opening of some ballots. This is a key state that's uh, in, in contest right now. You can see on the vote totals, Joe Biden with about a 50,000 vote lead right now with... 94% of the expected vote in. So still votes to be counted there, but the Trump team right now asking the vote counting to stop in Michigan on the grounds that they were not allowed to observe the ballots being open. We'll see if a judge rules on this in the next few hours or days as counting could resume. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Jared. Meanwhile, back here, the turnout overall has broken records, and there are quite a few down ballot races in San Diego County that are very close, as we've shown you some. Several hundred thousand ballots yet to be counted. ABC 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie has the latest on that work and what will happen in the coming days. The record turnout came in the form of mail-in and early voters, so the process was more streamlined here at the Registrar of Voters. As election night ended, the work continued taking down banners and signs today. And the counting continues. There's still more than 300,000 ballots outstanding. As additional mail and provisional ballots are added to the numbers, the voter turnout percentage will go up as well. 
but we don't expect another release of numbers until tomorrow and a full month to go before the results are official. We'll have to go through that 30 day certification period, make sure that uh, no one has double voted, make sure that all the accounting that has needs to occur, that all the 235 sites across the, the four day period occurs as well. They were here through the night and will continue counting each ballot that comes here ultimately from the U.S. Postal Service. In California, because you can register and vote same day by provisional ballot, those take days longer to validate and be counted. And ballots that were postmarked with Tuesday's date will be counted in the coming days. They randomly pull batches from each precinct and hand count them across all 196 contests to ensure the accuracy of the system was intact. That has to happen as well before the election can be certified. After that, on December 3rd, there's still a five day period when challengers can request a recount. And we have several close contests that have yet to be called. We asked about the possibility of a contested race or a recount and how that affects the certification process. For us, it has no bearing whatsoever in terms of our ability to certify the election by December 3rd. Uh, ultimately, there may be challenges out there, uh, whether it's the presidential race or any other local contest out, the, out there. So the work here is far from over, even when election night is over. Mary McKenzie, ABC 10 News. So as you can see, a lot still developing this morning. For more results and the latest updates as they come in, just go to 10news.com, check out our election 2020 section. The results of some of the big state propositions still coming in. We're going to have more on those next. And a closer look at the race in the 50th district, which has really tightened up. And things are warming up briefly for a couple of days. I'll pinpoint that warm up due to weak Santa Ana winds and the winter like weather we'll feel this weekend. We're keeping a close eye on a lot of the races for positions in office, but there are also a lot of contentious propositions on the ballot. Let's take a look at some of the results so far. And you know, the state is also still counting votes, but you can see Prop 15. This is the commercial property tax for education funding. At 52% say no, 48% say yes. Now let's take a look at Prop 16. This is the one that would would have brought back affirmative action for government decisions, including government uh, agencies and schools. And you can see no there, 56% to 44%, yes. And then Prop 22, we heard a lot about this. This has had to do with the app-based drivers being classified as independent contractors. 58% saying yes, 42% said no. And we are taking another quick look at the current results in the battle for the seat in the 50th Congressional District. Daryl Issa holding about a four and a half point lead there. You see 52% to 48% with Amar Kampanajar. ABC 10 News reporter Vanessa Paz live from home with this race and a closer look at how things worked out here and a lot closer than a lot of people thought it was going to be, Vanessa. 